Good morning and welcome to the Top 5 Ways Business Intelligence Tools Improve Driver Safety Webinar. My name is Georgia Brown. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Extend Data. And our first presenter is Abigail Potter, Safety Research Analyst from the American Trucking Association. Hello and uh, thank you for having me today. And our second presenter is Daryl Wilson, Senior Solutions Architect and Product Manager here at Extend Data. Hello, everyone. All right, so uh, before we get started, just a couple items. I'd like to go ahead and thank our sponsors, Honeywell and Blue Star. Without their support, as well as the American Trucking Association, this webinar today would not have been possible. Here's the agenda for today. So first, we're going to start with the safety statistics and DOT regulations then talk a little bit about what's a delivery management system, and then Daryl will go into the top five that, we, that, that we're all here for today. And Abigail, if you want to go ahead and, and speak to your uh, slides, uh, take it away. All right. Thank you, Georgia. I'll get this. So first, understanding and identifying driver distraction is a very relevant topic. The Department of Transportation, leading safety organizations have placed a strong emphasis on combating driver distraction. And they've done this a few ways. They've done this through ads, online materials, suggested company policy, and even put forth regulation. And this increased attention has come from two places. First has been data. There's been an increase in the number of studies on this issue and also statistics dealing with highway fatalities. And the second place is the rapid increase of electronic devices within society. Within my presentation, I'm going to cover those two issues, look at what is currently being required for commercial drivers, and look at the future. On this first slide, or this first chart, you can see the top seven factors for accidents involving truck drivers. No surprise. Speeding is the number one problem. But right underneath is distraction. The second chart, it digs deeper into the type of distractions that cause accidents. As you can see, texting has the largest association to crash risk. That being known, states have been very proactive in adopting texting bans for all drivers. And currently, there are 46 states and the District of Columbia that have texting bans. Also from this chart, uh, handheld use has been shown to only have a small association to crash risk. However, the process of using a cell phone with reaching and dialing has a significant association. So what is currently being required for the truck and bus industry? Commercial drivers are prohibited from holding, dialing, texting, and reaching for a mobile phone. The regulations have created um, very strong civil penalties for drivers and employers. Drivers are subject to fines up to $2,750, and employers are subject to fines up to $11,000. Also, FMCSA has assigned handheld and texting use as a 10-point violation um, in the unsafe driving basic for the CSA program. And this really is significant because that is one of the highest violations, and it has the same weight as a drug and alcohol violation. So this greater attention to driver distraction has come from the increase of electronics being used within society. Two-thirds of Americans own smartphones. Also, companies have really moved in the direction of becoming paperless. And they've done this through fleet management systems and electronic logs. And so the future really holds is that we are really going to see more electronic devices being incorporated into our vehicles. Um, and then also on a regulatory side, we're going to see electronic logs, 
um, logging devices being required for hours of service. And we're going to see a final rule most likely at the end of 2000 of this year. And so with more electronic devices within our vehicles, we could see um, or these types of uh, electronic devices being integrated and required within our vehicles. There is the possibility of stronger laws and regulations. However, currently, there is nothing um, on the horizon strengthening these regulations, distracted driving regulations, but one accident could really change the direction um, and change the direction very, very quickly. And so finally, what can companies do to reduce driver distraction? All companies are different, and everyone and needs to look at their operations and come up with a plan um, and create smart solutions to really combat this problem within um, the driving community um, to prevent driver distraction. And that pretty much wraps up my presentation and I will pass it off to Georgia. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. So folks, when Extend Data uh, goes and does our, you know, our industry research and we try to figure out where we're going to take our organization and company, we look at the information that um, or so organizations like American Trucking Associations and their experts such as Abigail uh, put together and how they are um, informing the industry as a whole. Then we take a look at our tools and we, we combine that all together to get a roadmap of where we want to go. And thus delivery management systems is what I want to talk about briefly. Uh, this is just to give you some context for what Daryl will speak about in the top five and I'll try to move this through this rather quickly for you. With the information at hand from Abigail, uh, we started looking in the cab of the truck and we noticed that there are an enormous amount of devices in there. And they're all very critical to in-cab functionality in the business. But, you know, just for the fun of it, go ahead and count for me in this photo, how many devices do you think you see? I'll give you just a, a second for that. Because this is really a, a, a striking thing for us. Now, if you guessed four, you're absolutely correct. If you guessed six, then you're on the same plane that uh, Extend Data and our product mobile conductor is because what you're not seeing in this photo is like is uh, potentially the black box and then also the driver's cell phone or smartphone. And, and that just, you know, seems too much. And the next question was, how much do all these devices cost? So we started tallying it up. You've got your black box, you got your onboard computer, GPS and maps, CD radio, and then finally a mobile computer for e-log or proof of delivery applications. Then you need all the software. So you got GPS, telematics, e-logs are hours of service, DVIR, and proof of delivery, and then messaging. Now, just to add a little bit of unknown costs onto that, such as you know the initial implementation. And then uh, you have to multiply that by the number of trucks in your fleet. And I don't even have enough room on my screen to fully capture what that's going to look like. This is approximately three trucks worth uh, of expenses for in-cab costs. And, and, you know, obviously there has to be a better way. So we developed one device in the cab with mobile conductor. And this is a delivery management system. What this does is it organizes disparate applications into one organized industry tested workflow. Each program is then called up in the order that the driver needs, all from one mobile computing device. Then the in-cab system communicates back with the server and back-end reporting, and for increased uh, for increased business intelligence, the system can connect to the ERP or WMS. So that's just a real quick overview. We wanted to give you that context so you understood where Daryl was coming from 
with his top five ways business intelligence tools improve driver safety. Thank you, Georgia. So uh, what we'll do is kind of dive in a little bit deeper on this concept of a delivery management system and the uh, ways that it can promote driver safety uh, throughout, uh, throughout the industry. And really where we wanted to start was with this concept of one device in the cab. And as Georgia mentioned, you know, a typical cab would have, you know, say four to six devices in it, depending upon, uh, you know, how things get configured. Um, but really what we say is that, you know, if you've got all these possible devices, um, and many of these, you know, are running on their own, you know, onboard computer or a navigation device and obviously a cell phone that could be company provided or it could be a personal cell phone. Now, there's so many different ways that this could uh, work itself out, but uh, with mobile conductor, we can really combine a lot of this into just one device. So with our Android solution, uh, you know, typically that device is obviously going to be able to be a phone, uh, it could be used for email and for messaging. Um, it also can be utilized for uh, electronic hours of service, uh, e-logs, can also be used for DVIR and navigation and then proof of delivery or whatever sort of transaction management uh, process you need to follow. So with uh, the combination of taking these different disparate applications and putting them into a single device, you obviously have a, a lower cost of acquisition. Uh, you know, through the process of potentially upgrading or um, deploying new trucks. Um, and then obviously maintenance uh, becomes a, a lower cost as well because you're only dealing with a single device. And that's not always going to remove um, the black box scenario or the CB radio, but it's going to combine a lot of these into a single device, you know, reducing distractions. So moving into that same kind of topic of, you know, prohibiting distractions or reducing those to the best that uh, we can, this is really a concept um, that we call really locking down the device. So with Mobile Conductor, uh, the application is constantly monitoring GPS. So as the device moves, so with the truck in this case, and it gets over a, a specific uh, speed, then what we do is lock down the device so that the you know buttons lock down so the device can't go back to the home screen um, and then we keep the, the device on a screen such as this one displaying here which is showing the speed and the latitude longitude that could also show uh, the address for the next location that customer's name and so on uh, really the, the key here is locking that device down so a driver can't do texting uh, which showed as the um, basically the top distraction um, in the Abigail's data. So really with locking that down, um, we can really make it useless for the driver to have to mess with it. What we can also do with this too is when the workflow is engaged and knows where the next uh, customer stop is, we can automatically initiate navigation, uh, turn by turn audible navigation to uh, help guide the driver to that next location. And again, do that all in an automated fashion so the driver doesn't have to touch the device. So back to on that same topic of navigation, um, what that looks like for us um, really is smart navigation. And what that means to us is uh, utilizing a navigation tool that has up-to-date maps and has a configuration that's based on the type of vehicle that the that's being used uh, as well as the potentially the load that's being carried um, in addition to the weight so any sort of navigation uh, from current location to a, a next customer location or, or whatever that might be is going to be specific to um, the equipment being used so that's going to avoid uh, the streets and the bridges and things like that that need to be avoided based on that uh, type of equipment in addition, as I mentioned before, we use audible turn-by-turn -turn directions so the driver doesn't have to look at the map. He can listen to uh, the instructions that are coming from that navigation solution. In addition to that, uh, this can also provide uh, traffic alerts so that from a, a routing perspective, you know, navigating to that next location, 
those traffic um, components can be utilized to again help that dri those drivers avoid those um, traffic scenarios that uh, um, really can create a lot of havoc as well as uh, slow uh, down delivery times. And then really our last point around this too is also uh, weather alerts. So not only could a you know weather application be loaded onto the device um, you know that would provide all sorts of detail around uh, current weather conditions. We also have functionality to get weather alerts from the National Weather Service and then push those from our server down to the appropriate devices um, that are located in those regions that have those alerts. So again, those alerts can come down um, with this, uh, you know, with any sort of message that we need to for them so that the drivers can see this and they can, they can acknowledge that. Our next uh, topic really is around electronic uh, DVIR vehicle inspections uh, and really utilizing this as um, not only a regulatory compliance process but also a driver safety uh, issue. In a lot of cases, you know, vehicle inspection checklists are very, um, I don't know, they're not very helpful in a lot of, t a lot of cases. When, you know, a paper uh, form has nothing but check boxes that you check your defect um, and maybe you, somebody's got to decipher some notes handwritten by a driver. Um, there's really not a lot extra you can do with that other than the fact that you're being compliant. With ve electronic vehicle inspections, we can not only enforce that inspections are being done um, at the proper time in the driver's daily workflow, but then also enhance that so that not only could you capture, you know, if something is defective or not, but also gather additional information um, through the process of customized um, driver inspections. So with Mobile Conductor, uh, we can support a variety of different configurations that those could either match perfectly your paper inspection um, or you could create um, additional uh, inspections that go along with this. Different inspections for both uh, pre-trip and post-trip, but then also the ability to categorize these values so that the prompting, the questions that drivers need to lo um, look at are grouped based on the location or topic around the truck. So the engine compartment, the exterior, the cab, the drivetrain, and so on. In addition to that, we can support uh, different types of input. So checkbox might be the equivalent of your, you know, just checking on a paper form of defective or not. But then also the ability to support uh, drop-down lists and uh, just straight text box, text boxes for uh, capturing additional information. Um, in addition to that, we have the ability to determine uh, what defective uh, questions might actually require um, the driver to select a different vehicle and any of that type of data that gets captured uh, automatically synchronizes back to our server to alert vehicle maintenance um, of these issues with the vehicle. And then lastly with this, uh, not only do we have those um, types of input, but we also have the ability to capture photos with this and we can specify what questions might uh, a photo apply to. So a lot of different ways to capture good data and then through the, through the finalization of that inspection, the driver would uh, be signing off uh, to acknowledge that uh, they've completed that inspection. Hey, Daryl, I have a question for you. Yep. So when we're talking about the DVIR stuff, in the past we've chatted about how this can actually alert the system to make a, um, a truck uh, unable for usage within mobile conductor. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's true. So again, depending upon the, the questions that have critical answers to those, um, not only can we alert vehicle maintenance about those issues, but then we'll also disable the vehicle in uh, uh, mobile conductor so that no other driver could select that vehicle and potentially try to use it as well. And then obviously as the maintenance process is um, followed up on and those vehicles are um, you know, the, what was actually done with those is recorded in mobile conductor in the server side of it. Um, and then the maintenance folks re-enable those vehicles, then 
the, that data as far as what those repairs were is also reviewable by the drivers when they're when they would do that first inspection. Great, thanks. Yeah, I really enjoy um, this DVIR subject because of the way that it um, helps companies and fleets from eliminating those common violations of, you know, failure to submit, failure to act on the reporting of defects, and then, you know, that that uh, a certifying signature. That's one of those top things that uh, fleets get dinged for all the time. Yep. Yeah, and with Mobile Conductor, all of this data is captured on the device and immediately synchronized back to the server so that it's accessible almost immediately. So you're, you're not worried about drivers turning in paper forms or, you know, are the right forms turned in versus a copy in the cab and, and, and so on. The ability for that data to be looked up and pulled up at basically any point in time, um, you know, through that window of time where you have to keep your records, uh, that's easily accessible. Uh, along with with both the signature, the driver's name, the vehicle mileage, and all those um, all that data captured through the inspection. All right, so I'll move on to our last topic here, uh, which really focuses on workflow management. Um, Mobile Conductor, being a delivery management system, uh, is really all about managing the daily workflow for a driver. Uh, when you combine multiple solutions into a single device. So for example, hours of service, DVIR, proof of delivery, um, and potentially time tracking and other solutions like that. What we can do through our configuration process is set that up so that as the driver logs in, they may you know, immediately be pushed over to get logged into their hours of service. Um, and not until that is done can then we could uh, capture a vehicle inspection and obviously from a delivery uh, management process you know with proof of delivery solutions we can enforce that all those other processes took place before uh, we would allow them to you know confirm arrival and go through a you know an item level um, proof of delivery for customers where they can capture signatures and print receipts and capture payment and different things like that and through that process uh, of workflow management, you know, we can provide both drivers the confidence they need to know that, okay, well, I, I know I'm compliant with the necessary regulations that I've got to follow uh, because this handheld device with all these solutions is, you know, basically driving me through a, a process. That also provides um, confidence to transportation managers who can see a lot of this, uh, the status of this stuff almost in real time via the server. So both with uh, uh, the hours of service components, a lot of that can be, you know, tracked right away. Uh, location tracking, you know, where are these guys at, at any given point in time? And then what are the status of my deliveries? Where am I at in my delivery windows? Am I on schedule or not? Um, all that information is is available to transportation folks so that uh, they have what they need um, to help enforce uh, customer service and uh, and compliance with these. All right. So uh, basically, in summary, again, we talked about the first thing being one device in the cab. So the the concept of uh, reducing the number of devices and consolidating those into a single Android-based device that can support uh, things like hours of service, vehicle inspection, navigation, proof of delivery, uh, and so and messaging and all the other applications that you might want to make available to your drivers. Second, prohibiting distractions uh, primarily through uh, device lockdown while the vehicle is in motion. And then moving on to navigation, smart navigation using audible turn-by-turn -turn directions um, based on the information provided through the solution to uh, provide navigation to the next location that the driver is going based on the equipment that they're using. Also utilizing traffic uh, and weather alerts. Number four, dealing with uh, vehicle inspections, capturing those electronically, utilizing that to promote vehicle safety. And then lastly, um, giving drivers confidence through workflow management. 
All right, Georgia, back to you. Thank you very much. So uh, now is the time for folks to submit some questions using the GoToWebinar feature if you have any. Uh, Abigail, I have a question for you. Um, when you were talking about the, uh, the regulations and the one that came out on January 3rd, 2012, yeah. that it says it's prohibiting truck drivers from holding, reaching, or dialing a cell phone. Um, does that apply only to a cell phone or does that apply to all the devices in the cab? Um, the, the regulation clearly states uh, a mobile phone. Um, they made that very specific because there were a couple other um, devices that are used within the cab that were kind of shown to have a, a bit of a safety benefit, surprisingly. Um, one of those was a, a CB radio. Um, with this regulation, um, there is no expectation that they would, you know, go a little bit further. But they did make it very clear that um, it's solely focused on a, a mobile phone. Okay, great. So then, uh, Daryl, we had a question come in. This is, can there be? Um, I believe the, the question is, can we use Garmin for navigation in this type of a system that we're discussing? Yeah, that really the intent is to try to um, reduce that into a single device so that, you know, if you're going to utilize a device that could be a, a phone or electronic hours of service or proof of delivery, uh, then you're generally looking at an Android device that would, you know, could either be as simple as a phone, could be a ruggedized, uh, Android device, you know, with say a four or five inch screen, could be a mini tablet, could also be a full size um, tablet Android device, and um, we would utilize navigation on that. If we used a Garmin, uh, you know, obviously that would be a separate device um, that primarily would have navigation um, functions only. Yeah. And just from my perspective on Garmin, that's you know that's a proprietary device and a platform. And when you um, you know hit your trailer to a, a company that has that proprietary stuff going on, you increase your risk. But as where you use something like an Android device, where you know lots of companies are enabling their platforms and their solutions on Android, you actually reduce the risk of, of getting into trouble with your IT infrastructure. Looks like we are through all our questions. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'd like to once again thank our sponsors, Honeywell and Blue Star. We appreciate your support. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me, Georgia Brown. Uh, that's my email and my number in direct line. Thank you once again, everybody, for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and your week.